If your Terraform backend configuration looks like that, then you might need to watch this video. Terraform now supports the S3 backend with S3 native state locking, meaning that you can, and you should really, remove that DynamoDB table configuration. With the new release of the Terraform, you don't need that DynamoDB configuration anymore and that DynamoDB locking mechanism will soon become deprecated, so you have to move to a new solution anyways. And you might be asking, how do we deal with that TF state locking from now on? Uh, what does it mean that S3 native state locking is supported? And uh, in fact, it's super easy, let me show you. In case uh, you're not sure how state, uh, Terraform state uh, locking mechanism works at all, regardless if it's a DynamoDB or natively an S3, let me show you what solution Terraform is using now and what we need to change in our code to switch to that S3 native state locking. This is my basic uh, configuration. I've got AWS provider, which uh, simply means I use Terraform with AWS cloud. And I have one server, one subnet, and one VPC. My backend configuration is now configured to use that DynamoDB table, which would mean I would have to go to that DynamoDB service in AWS. Let me maybe duplicate this tab. I search for DynamoDB, and I would have to create table called what? Uh, Marek TF state logs. I would have to match this name simply that I have in the code, and that DynamoDB would be used as the locking mechanism for TF state file. And that's what we used to use for years, and it worked fine, but that also meant we would have one more resource to manage, because we have to manage that DynamoDB table. But from now on, you don't have to have that DynamoDB table. You can use S3 itself as a locking mechanism. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go to Google again, and ju let's, let's just search for Terraform release notes. And first li link at the very top, that's for 1.11, which is beta, and also S3 native state locking is now generally available. That's the node, but in fact, all that mechanism, that locking mechanism, wasn't introduced in 1.11. It was already in 1.10. If I go even, even if I show you in my terminal, my Terraform version is 1.10.4, and that is stable official release, and it already supports native state locking in S3. So let's scroll down, let's go to previous releases, 1.10, and if we scroll down, I believe it was 1.10.0 version that we are interested in. Yes, you can see, upgrade nodes. The S3 backend now supports S3 native state locking, but also DynamoDB locking mechanism and associated arguments will be deprecated. So in my opinion, there is no point in waiting until it happens, I would say. You can start testing this new solution in your dev environment today. So let's go back to my code. This is Terraform, and I have that DynamoDB table. I want to get rid of it. So I simply say, let me remove it. And I say, use log file. And I want it true. I want to enable that mechanism. That's all it is. So now I will just command S. And my S3 bucket for the backend is called Marek bucket for TF state. I have just created this <laughs> just for this reason, just to show you how it works. So if we go to S3 buckets, as you can see, this is the bucket, Marek bucket for TF state. If I click on it, it's currently empty. There is nothing in this bucket. And every time when you change the backend configuration, you have to run Terraform in it anyways. So you run terraform init, click enter, and it's been successfully initialized. The first line said initializing the backend, which means this S3 bucket can be used also for that log file. Now let's test it. Let me maybe clear that. And I say terraform apply. It says tree to add because I've got server, subnet, and VPC. If we have a look, Terraform indeed tries to create the server, the subnet, and the VPC. But before I say yes, let's have a look what's in the bucket. There is no TF state file yet, but we already see TF state TF lock file. This is our locking mechanism. A TF state file will only be created now when I say yes. 
let's say yes. It's been added. I mean, all my resources have been added. If I go back to my bucket, if I refresh it, now we've got TF state, but we don't have TF log. That's because my TF state file doesn't have to be locked because Terraform already completed its work. We can even check. I've got, let's maybe instead of duplicating, let's try here. EC2, we can see we've got virtual server running. This is my server. It's been created together with subnet and VPC. So let's now destroy it. Let's clear first again. Terraform destroy. Yes, I want to destroy everything. All resources have now been destroyed. So if I go to my instances and refresh, we can see it's not running, but if I remove this filter, we can see it, but in instance state terminated. And if we go back to my bucket, if I refresh my bucket, this Terraform TF state will now stay here. And it will always be there, regardless of if I have some resources or if I don't have any resources in the cloud. But now, if we go back to VS Code, let's clear again, and I want to Terraform apply again, let's click enter, so I want to build my infrastructure again, and Terraform asks me if I want to perform these actions, I will not say anything yet, but I will open terminal, so let's imagine this is a second person trying to apply the same changes at the same time. I'm now basically in the same in the same folder as here, yes? I can see provider, server, subnet, blah, blah. And I run Terraform apply here, and also run the same command, I get the error. And the error says error acquiring the state log. Because if we go to this S3 bucket and refresh, now we've got both TF state, because it will always be here from now on, and we have the log file, which tells me that somebody else is working on this infrastructure at exactly the same time as I want to do it. So I won't be able to run anything until this log is removed. So let me go back to Terraform, to VS Code, sorry. I say yes. Let's build that infrastructure again. And now it's been created again. So now, if I go back to my terminal, if I run Terraform apply again and click enter, I shouldn't get any errors this time. It now tells me your infrastructure matches the configuration. It now can run Terraform apply because it checks if the log file exists. If I refresh, it shouldn't be there. Yes, there is no TF log file. There is only TF state file. So Terraform checks this TF state file. It sees that all the resources that are supposed to be built are, have already been built. So there is nothing for it to do. It says your infrastructure matches the configuration. Because if I run it here in VS Code, Terraform apply, I will get the same message. My infrastructure matches the configuration. So I can destroy now, and I hope that makes sense. And you don't need to manage that DynamoDB table anymore. If you are interested in DevOps and cloud technologies, then please remember that you can join our community on automationavenue.com platform, where you can learn all about Terraform, AWS Cloud, Python, and many more uh, like cloud and DevOps re re related topics. So I hope that helps and thank you for watching. Marek.